I have spent $17,496.79 on sleep tech, which is way too much. But today I'm gonna to tell you what's worth it, what's a maybe, and what you should not spend your hard earned money on. All right, we got five categories, light, sound, temperature, sleep tracking, and comfort. And for each item, I'm gonna tell you whether I like it and I think it's worth your money, whether it's a maybe borderline depending on your use case and whether you should just save your money. Let's start with light. So two main things with light, the first being more important, which is to eliminate light when you are falling asleep and trying to stay asleep, right? Very obvious. And then the optional one would be getting light exposure when you are waking up. I like that. It's a little bit more peaceful of a way to emerge from your sleep rather than having the, the really loud, annoying iPhone alarm that we all probably have a complicated relationship with. So blackout curtains, learn from my mistakes here and save yourself a lot of money. When I was in college, I got cheap Amazon uh, curtain rods and I hung cheap curtains from them. The whole thing was less than 50 bucks, maybe $15 for the, for the rods and the curtains were maybe 30, 40 bucks. And very, very effective. Just have to be careful of the edges and the bottom to make sure that, and also I guess the top, to make sure that light is not seeping through easily from the sides, but very effective. And not only are you blocking out light, but it helps insulate your home. So in the summer, it helps keep your room a little cooler. And in the winter, it helps keep it warmer. Now, the mistake I made is I went with a cheap alternative to nice blackout shades in my home. So moving to my home, I was like, I want to get rid of curtains because shades are more modern. They fit the aesthetic here. So let's do shades. I went with these Norman motorized shades. Long story short, they had these gaps on the side between the actual window frame and the shade. And that little bit of, you know, one centimeter on each side allowed enough light to come in that every morning, 7 a.m., I would wake up. Couldn't sleep in. Huge deal breaker. And I realized after a year of that, that it was compromising my sleep. And obviously, I very much prioritize my sleep, as we all should. So I got rid of them, literally threw them in the trash because they're custom made to your house and no one's gonna rebuy them for that reason. And I went with these Hunter Douglas Duet Light Lock Shades. They're way more effective. They're also more than twice the price, $4,300 to get them installed in my home. And the annoying thing is they need a certain level of depth to the windowsill. So because my windows have hand cranks, for two of the windows, I needed to install a separate wooden box around the window to get it installed, added another $300. So that was $4,600 for these shades. But now it's done. I'm finally happy. I wish I just did that in the first place rather than wasting the two grand on the Norman shades. These work with Apple Home. They completely block out the light and they're a pleasure to use. The cool thing too is they can go from bottom up. So I can actually block the bottom half of the window with the shades in case I want some privacy, in case I'm getting, you know, I'm changing and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, boy. Whereas most shades are just from the top down. Number two, sleep masks. And some people prefer sleep masks to blackout curtains at home which I personally don't because the sleep mask is gonna get dislodged as you're moving throughout the night. Therefore, you're gonna wake up from the light that inevitably uh, slips through the cracks. It's also not as comfortable to have something on your face when you sleep, but over the years, I've tried a lot of different sleep masks. So the one that is my frequent flyer, by the way, links to all these items are down in the description. This is my frequent flyer. And the reason being that it is contoured and you have plenty of space here for your actual eyelashes and eyes. So you don't have the pressure I like that, it has a little pouch, put my earplugs in there too. I tried some other ones anytime, you know, I'm like on the Tim Ferriss newsletter or whatever, and, and they recommend some sleep mask. I will try it, I will buy it because it's cheap, right? And they have different designs, 10, 15 bucks to try out. And contoured is definitely the way to go, way more comfortable. I think it was Peter Atia that swore by this, the Alaska Bear, really nice soft material, but again, it's not contoured, so not a fan. Just that little bit of pressure on your eyelids ruins it for me. This is also a nice one. I actually tried the new updated Manta sleep mask. I'm not sure when this was updated, but I tried their, one of their earlier versions around 2018 or 2019. And I gave them feedback saying, hey, this isn't quite designed properly for your nasal bridge. And um, they sent me some new ones, which I tried on a flight recently. And they're simple, their cheapest one, 35 bucks. I actually enjoyed this quite a lot. I was surprised by how comfortable and improved it was over that first generation. They also have a version with speakers in it, which doesn't seem as useful to me because if I'm in a hotel room, I can use the blackout curtains. So the only time I'm really using a sleep mask like this is when I'm on a plane or in a place where I'm not in a hotel room essentially. And in those instances, I probably want to really block out the noise around me. So I'm gonna be using AirPods or other noise canceling headphones. Is it worth your money? I think if you're traveling a comfortable, cheap sleep mask, you know, 10, 15 bucks like this, totally worth it. 
The Mantle Sleep is also great. Uh, not quite as compact, but very effective, very comfortable. 35 bucks, worth it. Number three is gonna be Smart Lights. I personally use Philips Hue, and I have light strips under my bed. I have light bulbs in the lamps on my nightstands. And I also have the Philips Hue bulbs, the light fixture above my bed. These can get pricey pretty quickly. So you need a hub, which is maybe 50 bucks. And each bulb or light strip is between 30 to $100 each. So it took me several years of adding, you know, one or two pieces here and there um, to eventually get to where I'm at now. I would say this probably isn't worth it for most people. It's just not worth the price, the amount of benefit you get. But let me tell you why it works for me. So when I'm getting ready for bed at 8.30 every night, the whole house turns red. That's my indication to get ready for bed, but also it reduces that blue light exposure and allows my eyes to adjust to a lower level of stimulation. Everyone's sensitivity here is different. My mom and brother could not care if it's super bright, fluorescent lights, they'll fall asleep just fine. But for me, I'm very sensitive to that. The other thing I really like is in the middle of the night, if I need to use the bathroom, I have Philips Hue motion sensors, which are I think 25 bucks a piece. I place them underneath my bed and there's a little bit of logic that you can easily program such that if I get up to use the bathroom, a very dim red light will illuminate from the light strips, just the ground and my path to the bathroom without turning on the other lights, but just the light strips. The other cool thing I used to do is wake up to a simulated sunrise from the lights. So they'll slowly fade on and get brighter and brighter to wake you up rather than an alarm. But again, now with the shades, I just have the shades automatically open at my desired wake up time. But let's say you don't have smart shades or you're waking up before the sun comes out, then obviously the smart lights are gonna be a much better option than trying to wake up to actual sunrise. The next category is sound. And obviously you want it to be quiet when you fall asleep. But what a lot of people don't realize is even if you don't wake up in the middle of the night, but there are noise disturbances, there's sound pollution that actually compromises your sleep quality and your restfulness. So there's only so much you can do here, right? One thing I've done is I've placed the guest bedroom as far away as possible from my bedroom so that if my guests want to stay up later than me or if they want to wake up before I do, then they're less likely to disturb me. Sounds coming from outside the home, a little bit harder to control, but what I choose to do is use white noise. And my white noise generator of choice is a fan. I don't think the fan you use really matters. I use the Dyson TP04. It purifies the air and it's a fan. It can work with your smart home so it can turn on and turn off and various settings if you want. And of course, it's also gonna clean your air. They're kind of pricey, usually over $300. And I've had the same functionality and usefulness from a $50 fan on Amazon. So not recommended for most people. Next up is this Smart Me humidifier, which is $140. It's gonna be beneficial for those who live in dry climates. I'm in the desert, I'm in Las Vegas. So I noticed I was having a lot of um, bloody noses and just irritation in my nasal mucosa because the air is just so dry. The nice thing here is that it also adds white noise. And then finally, earplugs. The regular foam ones are perfectly adequate. If you're feeling like it's poking you in the ear, it's usually because you're not inserting it deep enough. You do want to follow the instructions. You gotta like lift up your ear to straighten your ear canal when you insert it. I have also tried the gummy, like they're swimmers earplugs, I think. I never found them as comfortable or as effective as the regular foam ones. But again, going back to the sleep mask, when I travel, I keep earplugs with my sleep mask because obviously they are very effective and very cheap. The third category is temperature. And as you fall asleep, your body needs to cool down by one to three degrees. And when you wake up in the morning, it needs to warm by one to three degrees. Growing up, immigrant household, and I was always told never to turn on the AC at night, just open the windows and blast the fan. The problem is that it took way too long to actually cool the room. And I remember so many nights I would just, I thought I had terrible insomnia. It was actually that the room was just way too hot and I couldn't fall asleep. So by setting the AC a couple degrees cooler, it's gonna help you fall asleep faster and stay asleep. You actually want your AC cool enough such that you need a blanket on top. So if you're feeling warm, you can take your palms and your feet, stick it out from underneath the blanket to then cool yourself more effectively because this is glabrous skin. It's more effective at cooling the body. As for weather, I recommend this. I'd say for most people, setting the AC a little bit cooler and paying an extra 10, 20 bucks a month in electricity bills is probably worth it, but you'll have to make that decision. Now, the second device for modulating your temperature at night is gonna be cooling and heating your mattress. And there are many devices that do this. I'm currently using an eight sleep pad and it allows me and my partner to customize the temperature that we want for our side of the bed. The way it works is you have this thick mattress cover and it's connected with a few hoses to this machine and that machine will then pump water to either warm or cool the surface of the mattress. I've only had it for a couple weeks, so I'm still in the experimentation process, but I will say for me, 
the first week I actually probably got worse sleep because it was either too hot or too cold because you're controlling the temperature not only when you fall asleep but also midway throughout the night. But then after that first week, now it's getting really dialed in. When you first fall asleep, you want to actually cool your body more and then it slowly increases in temperature until you finally wake up. And the really cool thing is you can set the temperature at each of those points. So when you first fall asleep, you can make it cooler. Then when you're in your early stages of sleep, a little bit warmer, late stages, warmer than that. And then when you wake up, you can have it really warm because ideally to set your circadian rhythm more effectively, you wanna warm the body. For a California King, it's $2,500. The price varies based on the mattress size. And whether or not you should spend your money on it, I'm gonna say maybe for now because I need to do more testing. All right, number four, let's talk sleep tracking. The 8 Sleep actually has sleep tracking built in. The mattress cover has various sensors and such. It tells me my heart rate, my HRV, my restfulness, my sleep stages, etc. Doesn't seem to be as accurate in my experience. Again, I need to do more testing because there have been a couple nights where it tells me 100% sleep score, I wake up feeling like crap, and my other sleep trackers, my various rings, confirm that I in fact slept like crap. So when it comes to sleep tracking, I found the most utility with these sleep tracking rings or these fitness rings. I think they're not very useful for fitness and activity tracking. They're really specialized and have a great deal of utility for sleep tracking though. Apple Watch, better for fitness. Not as good for sleep in my experience because it's just kind of bulky and not the most comfortable to wear while you sleep. Now I've been using an Aura Ring. These are the two Gen 3s I have. I also have a Gen 2. I've been using them since 2019, I believe, every single night. Pretty accurate, pretty good. Don't like wearing them during the day. They're a little bit bulky and chunky. So the main things I'm looking for, am I getting enough sleep? So the total sleep duration, my resting heart rate, my HRV, and my body temperature. Uh, when I got sick with COVID twice in the last year or two, this actually showed me a spike in my temperature, you know, the day before I got sick. So pretty useful there. I think some people get a little too obsessive about their sleep stages and their sleep score. And at the end of the day, this needs to be a tool to help you improve your sleep and improve your lifestyle, not something to add anxiety. This new term was coined for that called orthosomnia, where people get so obsessed about their various sleep tracking and sleep metrics that it causes them anxiety. And that's really something to be avoided. Now I bought the Heritage that has the ridge on the top here for $299 because I was an early adopter from the Gen 2 to the Gen 3, I get the free annual membership. However, if you were to buy it now, Aura charges you a $72 annual fee, or I think it's $6 per month, which I think is a little bit silly. You're already paying a lot for the actual product and then charging a membership on top of that, it's kind of an insult. I also got this Horizon, so there's no ridge, there's a little dimple on the bottom and to have it in this stealth color, it's 450 bucks. So they do charge a premium and vary the pricing quite a bit depending on the style and the finish that you want. So I wear an aura ring on one hand and because I'm a weirdo, I wear two and I wear the ultra human air ring on my other hand. And big thanks to ultra human for actually sponsoring this video. This is very similar to the aura ring. I would say there are three main benefits and there are pros and cons to each. You can actually see the full comparison video here. But the three things I like, number one is gonna be the pricing. So you pay $349 for the ring, regardless of the color you want, even this uh, stealthy matte black color. And there's no subscription, just $349, you get the full functionality. Number two is that I haven't had the issue that I've had with the Aura Ring, whereby the heart rate data has gaps in the middle of the night with Aura. Not super frequently, but I'd say for me around 10 to 15% of the time, I don't have complete data at night. I'm not sure why that is. And the third thing is gonna be the actual design. So first, I love that it's perfectly symmetrical all around and it looks like a regular ring. It doesn't look like a smart ring. It's also very thin. So when you put it on your finger, you're not getting any obstruction to the fingers to the side, whereas that has been a problem with some of the other products I've tried. If you wanna try the Ultra Human Air yourself, use coupon code KEVIN10 for 10% off your purchase, link in the description. And the fifth and final section, let's talk about comfort. And one of the main things is actually your mattress choice. I think there's a lot of bad advice about mattresses. So nowadays, memory foam is, is the standard, right? And I remember, this must have been five years ago, I spent the night at a friend's place and he was traveling, so I slept in his bed, like his nice bed. And it was amazing because I fell asleep super quickly and I think I woke up not having moved an inch. I just felt like the most supportive cloud-like mattress. And I said, when I moved, I needed to get one just like that. So a couple years later, I move and I buy the same mattress. It's a Tempur-Pedic. It's no longer offered on their website because they're always changing the names and the products and whatever, but it's their thickest one in a California King that is the soft version. I was always told that you want a firm mattress that's good for your back, but I think 
there's a lot of bad advice when it comes to what mattress you should choose. Part of it depends on your sleeping position. So I sleep on my side. That's gonna be different than a back sleeper or a belly sleeper. But I find that a soft and supportive mattress really works wonders for my side sleeping. And now I do feel kind of spoiled because when I travel and such and I don't have my eight sleep and my nice thick mattress, then my sleep isn't generally as good. But I will say that you're spending close to one third of your life on your bed and sleeping. So you wanna prioritize getting a high quality mattress. You don't have to go I think this was around $5,300 before tax. You don't have to go all out, but you know, getting something that's decent quality, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg, but go try different mattresses and find what works best for you. I think that is gonna pay dividends. The amount of time and energy you spend upfront to get that better sleeping experience, really worth it. And the second thing is your pillow and sheet selection. So it took me way long to figure this out. It's kind of embarrassing, but I would take two pillows, stack them on top of each other, and then use that to get the proper height and then modulate how big each of those pillows were because I felt like pillows were never thick enough. And now I finally have these really thick, chunky Tempur-Pedic ones that work well. But the key thing here is your pillow choice is gonna be dependent on your mattress type, right? Because a softer mattress versus a firmer mattress is gonna influence how much support you need from your shoulder to your neck. So get your pillows after you first choose on your mattress. I also wasted too much money just experimenting with sheets, bamboo ones and different fibers and whatnot. And Kirkland sheets, they work well for me. Great quality, comfortable, I'd recommend them. All right, bonus section, a couple honorable mentions. Ecobee thermostat, they come with this separate temperature sensor and I have one right by my bed so that I can tell the AC at night to prioritize cooling this room to the desired temperature, not the whole floor or not the a uh, little pocket of air near the actual thermostat. Number two is a Kindle, and I use that every night to read because it's not disrupting my sleep with that bright blue backlit screen. And you can adjust the color temperature, make it more warm. You can do dark mode, invert the colors to make it black. A lot easier to read at night, and if you're sensitive to light like I am, it's gonna make a world of a difference. And number three, blue light blocking glasses. I used to use them quite regularly a few years ago, but since I started doing these, uh, you know, like the red lights throughout the house and using my Kindle at night, not so much my phone. I haven't felt the need. And that's it, my friends. Links to everything down in the description. Use Kevin10 for 10% off your Ultra Human Air. Much love, and I'll see you in the next one.